Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today I have something extremely exciting for you guys. Me and a very special guest are going to be rating all the factions in RAS version 0.5. And today I do have a very special guest. He's a part-time mod developer, full-time troll. It's Mosca Flacker, <laughs> one of the lead developers of RAS. Welcome to the channel. Thanks, dude. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, well, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have actually, like, a, a bit of behind the scenes, guys. We have actually been talking for quite a while, but this is actually the first time we've actually properly talked, so we are both very excited to, uh, uh, to get this done. So, guys, I thought it was a great idea to have one of the mod team here with us uh, while we're doing this faction ranking because they know so much more about these nations than I do. And I've played a lot of RIS, uh, but Mosk is going to be here. And it, we're, we're definitely probably not going to have too many debates, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but, Mosk, do you want to just explain the ranking system, like how we're going to rank these nations to start with? Uh, yeah, guys. So... Um, like you said, I'm Mosca Flaka. If you are active in our Discord server, you may have seen me talking to you guys at some point. But I am one of the members of the mod team, and I've been with uh, Ahow11, helping him mod since uh, Rome Total War with his RTR8 mod. Um, but anyway, to get into the tier list, uh, I've created this tier list, and at the top we've got Stratigos, which is the top category, and only one faction will be there, it's the top category. Second, we've got Hetairoi for the bodyguards. Uh, next up, we've got um, Agima, who are the vanguard, Epilectoi, who are the elite, Epibatai, who are the marines, Ephibes, who are the youths, Siloi, who are basically meat shield skirmisher crash units, and at the bottom, Crapidocha, because all my homies hate Crapidocha. <laughs> well, we might as well get started straight away then. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> straight in there. We will right. actually probably talk about Crapidocha at some point. Uh, at but some point. For now, it's going in there and it's staying in there. <laughs> yeah, so, not moving. No. Uh, in terms of the, the nations that we're going to do, we're going to do them in a, in a bit of an order, mainly geographical. We're going to start with the Greeks and then go towards the Iberians, the North Africans, the Celts, the Germans, and so on. Ending with a resounding crescendo on the Diadochi and uh, Rome, of course. So do you, Mosca, just want to explain how we're going to rank these factions then? Yes. Uh, me and Red Zed talked about this briefly earlier, and our way of ranking these factions is going to be number one, how good slash how strong they are in RIS, meaning what is their economic start position look like? What is their roster like? How good are the units they have available to them? Um, number two criteria is how important they were historically, meaning how much of an influence on the future the faction had and the third uh, criteria is going to be aesthetics meaning how the faction icon looks how their units look and just the look and feel of the faction yeah so in short we're basically how strong they are <laughs> like how yes. historically impactful they are and the last one how cool we think they are obviously a bit subjective with how cool they are but you know, I think we've both got pretty similar tastes in terms of that. So, if you're it's a, a tier list, it's all subjective. Yeah, it's all subjective, exactly. So, we're going to start with the Greeks. So, we've got the Achaean League to start with. And do you have any firm feelings on this? Because I know, so, so yeah, so go on. You, you, you uh, let us know what you think about the Achaean League. So, with a lot of these factions, you're going to say, oh, it's the Achaean League. And. 99% uh, of people are going to say, who? So they don't really have any uh, brand recognition as far mm. as anyone outside of like a Greek historian would know who the Achaean League are. So they can't be above... Uh, what do we have there? What's below Epilectoi? Ephibes? Right? Uh, Is that Ag Ephibes? Agama, Ag so Heteroi, Agama, Epilectoi, Epibartai, Ephibes above Siloi. Yeah, I don't think they I don't think they can make it above Epibatai cuz they are decent in RIS but they're also pretty weak cuz they're one of the factions that die a lot cuz they have a pretty weak start. So, I would say they 
They have a good roster, but they die a lot. So I would say probably Ephebes. Whoa, <laughs> that's that's brutal. Um, I I do agree. I think uh, I think yeah, they you know their start is pretty trash. They literally start with one settlement, losing four thousand gold a turn. Um, don't start with many troops. Uh, but they, uh, I, I just can't. Their, their roster is re for the Greek rosters. That their roster is one of the strongest non diadochi rosters. I would say. And like, and I just want to add to that. We we did agree. Um, we are judging the rosters based, or for the Greek factions, the rosters are based on the zero point six rosters. Um, and if you don't know what the zero point six rosters are, watch Red Zed's videos on the faction previews so you can see why we're saying that their army is good or bad yeah exactly um so make sure you watch uh, those videos that's your homework so i would say like if they're a phoebes they've got to be like at the top of a phoebes if not at the top of a phoebes i i can accept yeah so we'll say like the left hand side one is the top yes. of the ranking yes. there um mm -hmm. so next next one i think we think we don't need to debate uh, achaeans too much more i think uh no. itolians let's Itolians. Uh, yeah so I would uh, say, in terms of like, I would say the Aetolians, although they start with like four or five settlements, mm -hmm. I would put them lower than Achaeans just because of the roster. I know you like the Aetolians though, so I'll let I, you, I'll I let you like, have a say on this. Um, I would put the Aetolians above the Achaeans. <laughs> um, I like the fact that their units are mainly missile troops and light troops, so they don't really... There are face-to-face units, like a face-to-face -face battle between Achaeans and Aetolians. The Achaeans should win, but the Aetolians have a lot more flexibility in terms of their missile units. But they're really not that much better than the Achaeans, but they they have a way better start with like three or four hmm. cities, while Key only has one city. So... Well, yeah, I, I, you, yeah, you like missile troops. I, I notoriously... Do do not so, so that i think we'll beg to differ on that one but i i think the start i agree with you the start because it's got there's they start with five settlement uh four settlements i think like uh, um i'm not completely sure off the top of my head but it's three or four i want to say yeah so i just think we can't look past that because the achaeans do really do start like on the doldrums like they literally have a large town all their mm -hmm. units are, are skirmisher units, and they have a single large town. They've got Sparta, Antigonids, and the Aetolians around them. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. We've got to have to put them above them, because that start is so much, so much better. Four times better, in fact. <laughs> Probably, yes. And, you know, as we go along, we can move factions up and down a little bit. If, yeah. Uh, once, but you know we're right at the start, so yeah, I think, want to start strong. I think uh, I think once we've gone through a few Germanic and Celtic ones, we might be moving some of the the, the Greek ones up. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Yeah. Um. So on to the next one, which is Athens. Athens. Hmm. <laughs> um. I have strong feelings about Athens. I think Athens has to be uh, has to be in Siloy, probably the bottom of Siloy. One of the hard really? yeah, I think. Wow. I think, although I've done a video where I made the start not look too hard, I think for right. most people, it's probably one of the hardest starts. I think their roster isn't great in terms of its strength. Again, it's skirmisher roster, so whatever. Whenever there's a skirmisher roster, I'm gonna be biased. I don't like skirmishers, um, so I think Athens. Although they start with, you know, Athens is. A minor city it actually makes quite a decent bit of cash at the start of the game you're also surrounded by the boeotians the antigonids the aetolians the achaeans sparta there's not really any rebel settlements for you to expand into so you have to go directly out of the factions which we we've talked about is the better way to go anyway um, yes. but like there's no other options you've got no breathing room you've got to just literally go and conquer and if you don't you die so it's, it's like conquest or death with athens i would say um and I think, yeah, one of the hardest starts probably in the game, in my opinion, anyway. You know, you make a really good case for putting them low, and you're not wrong. They are very, very difficult in RIS. But you, ha I wanna, I wanna give them points for their historical importance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, 
the you know the Athenian Empire or whatever is long gone by the time of RIS. Yeah. But they still had a very significant impact in terms of you know the home of democracy, and a lot of people know who Athens is, but a lot of people don't know who Aetolia is or who Achaea is. So I think there's a case for them to not be in Siloy, uh, but that's purely based off of reputation and not at all based off of their function. Yeah. Maybe bottom of uh, Ephibes for the time being. Okay, cool. I I'm willing to accept that because obviously like the, the ramifications of the Athenian philosophers and stuff still yes. is around today. But my argument against that would be like, what point in the game do you uh, do you engage in philosophy? <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I know that there's going to be pitchforks and torches if we put the Athenians as, as too low. Uh, that's also probably true, but it's not scared me in the past, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. I think, you know, all you Athenian stands out there, I'm talking like in terms of the game. I'm not talking in terms of real life, like what Athens has actually done in real life. So don't be too upset <laughs> that I say that, you know, they're a very, well, it's pretty, I didn't say they were trash. I just said they were a very hard start. So, uh, which yeah. they are. Most people who've tried Athens really struggle. So yeah, it is a very, very hard start. Right, Boeisha then. Hmm. Silo. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you think Boeisha is worse than Athens? Yeah. Boeisha has no reputation. You say Boeisha, I say who? Yeah. <laughs> uh, their army is not that good. Their army is like a worse version of Ikea, I want to say. Yeah. Better than Athens um, and Aetolia, though. Uh, maybe. Debatable. <laughs> Definitely better than Athens. Definitely better than Athens, yeah. Um, I don't know. I think Boeisha is, is not that good. But I mean, what do got, you think? They've got Agama. So we got Gima. Yeah. So should they be a Gima category? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, All right. Uh, I don't know. I just think their roster, like, if I was going to choose out of the four factions we've done so far, apart from Crappadoche, okay. Um, okay. The the best roster, in my opinion, is the Achaeans, and then okay. I would say the second best is the Boeotians. Okay. In terms of the start, I'd say the Boeotians. Uh, are probably it's better than Athens it's mm -hmm. worse than the Aetolians it's probably better than the Achaeans as well um, but so it, you want to put go ahead sorry uh, so I, I, I'd probably put them just ahead of Athens alright I can accept that just just because of that roster because like Athens roster it truly is a lot worse than these two rosters anyway the Achaeans and the Boeotians it's pretty uh, bare bones yeah, and, and I mean, it, it, it's historically accurate, right? Because Athens wasn't really a big warring nation, so... Um... And I just want to go back to Athens real fast. Uh, a lot of the Ath Athenian reputation comes from way before the RIS start date. Yeah. So honestly, having them at the bottom of the Greeks, I mean, you know, it's not that <laughs> bad. But we'll see where Sparta goes. Oh, AR's going to be so mad with us for this, you know. Like, we're, it's, it's a Greek update, and we're putting them all in a Phoebe's. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. All right, who's right. next? Should we do, should we do Bosporans as part of the, the, the Greeks? Um, I guess so. Yeah, let's, let's do Bosp... Like, okay, let's, let's break out of the Phoebe's for one second. All right. Surely, surely, surely. we can say... I think Bosporans. they could be Epilectoi. I, I was just about to say that. I think because that mix of the Eastern sort of cataphracts and horse archers with exactly. Greek soldiers is so strong. It's exactly. With Greek infantry is so strong. Like Their start position is not great, but they mm, have very good units. Yeah, the, Sira the Sirachis, like the Scythians, are right next to them. That's one issue because the Scythians do have really strong generals, bodyguards, like all the horse archer factions do. Mm -hmm. But... You know, you if you beat the Scythians, you've got really no other enemies around you. You can just spread out at your own volition. Uh, yeah. You've got plenty of time. You can get loads of trade and in the Black land. Sea as well. Exactly. Yep. Good land. Fertile land for good farms. Uh, you know. So I think... I think Epilectoi is a good good place for them. Yeah, definitely. We've broken out. Fantastic. Good. Yeah. Yes. Go. Um, 
So we'll leave Kyrie and Epirus for uh, for the Diadochi. Uh, Massalia. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Do you want me to take the heat on this one or? <laughs> Siloid. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Now I'm gonna say the best thing that Massalia has going for it is the Saluvian Swordsman unit. Yeah. But that's a Barbarian unit. It's not, not Massalian. <laughs> yeah, Massalian is... Massalia... Sorry, guys. Massalia is not good. They suck. Yeah, it's... That, That again... I, uh, I don't know what's, what's harder, them or... Ath I'd say for most players, Athens is probably harder. But I would say for an mm -hmm. experienced player, Massalia is harder. Because... You've got rebel settlements to, to, to expand into, but those rebel settlements are the wrong culture and they're also trash. They are absolutely shit. Like, literally... Garrisons. Yeah, and then you've got a garrison in the areas. Then, pretty much if you expand any way east, because I've actually played Massalia for fun. Um, when I say fun, it was, yeah. <laughs> it was hard. But yeah, played Massalia for fun. And um, in my own time, that obviously I didn't record. And yeah, I, I made a brutal like terrible mistake of, of, of expanding east a little bit because there was a couple of cities or like large towns there rather than the everywhere north and like west of you is all just shit towns so i right. expanded east a little bit and then as soon as the romans touched me had about three full sacks just <laughs> just go yep. and descend on my land so Massalia, yeah very very no. very hard you're, you're Massalia, surrounded go look at the wall yeah go literally it's like you're, it's very hard. You you know, you've got the Romans as enemies everywhere around. You's a wrong culture, so you're gonna have massive unrest. Uh, and those, and I, I was gonna say the barbarian infantry units are generally gonna outmatch anything yeah. that Massalia can field, except for the mercenary swordsmen, the Saluvian swordsmen. Yeah, the roster like in terms of the the best thing in the roster, they have Thorakitai, but I think you get that mm -hmm. post reform. Uh, That's they a don't reform. Have, yeah, they don't have any phalangites, so you're not going to be able to defend well at all. They've got decent mm -hmm. slingers and archers, but that's not going to stop some crazy fucking bastard uh, barbarians Barbarian storming down your gate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, right. Um, on to roads then. So we're getting quite through the uh, the um, the Greeks. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I... Rhodes, Rhodes is a difficult one because Rhodes, the actual city of Rhodes is fantastic city to start with. The, yep. prob the problem being you only start with it. Like That is the only city you do start with. Uh, in terms of expansion options, you've got Crete and that's it. Um, well, you can't go into Asia Minor. Yeah. And I would say going into Asia Minor is not that hard because usually the Seleucids have a lot, the Seleucids and the Egyptians have a lot um, distracting them, so you can pick off pick off a couple of talents pretty easily. I don't think, and you have the Rhodian Slingers and the Rhodian Hoplites, yeah, which are pretty solid units. Yeah, um, if I remember correctly, the Rhodian hop Hoplites are like quite a bit better than the generic Greek Hoplite, aren't they? I think they they've got a bit more defense or something. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I believe they should be they should be slightly superior. Um, I don't think Rhodes is is that bad like i think they're and they and they start off with the colossus of Rhodes, so yeah. they start with a i think they might be one of the only small factions that start with a world wonder and that 40 percent trade income is yeah. also a pretty big boon i think i could see them being in their own tier at epibachai honestly and Ooh. i think that's fitting for them because they are uh, a naval civilization Okay, I mean, I'm willing to go with that, but I feel like putting them there now, I just feel so harsh on these two, to be honest. Honestly, you're right. Maybe it's too high. Maybe it's too high. <laughs> I was gonna go. go I was gonna go the other way and put the Aetolians and oh, the Achaeans yeah? up. <laughs> okay. All right. We, but we, hey, we can we can we can move around things. It's, yeah. It's not just me. How do you um, feel I'm about that to though? Not be at high. Because uh, like, honestly, that looks pretty ugly to me now that I'm seeing it. What? Rhodes now and Epibatai. Yeah, now that I'm seeing it, I don't like it so much. You're right. <laughs> what do you think? Ab so, above Boeisha? So not what? this. No. <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, um, I think, I think, yeah, putting them... Uh, 
like I think the roster for me of the Achaeans again just outmatches yep. Rhodes quite quite it significantly. Is it is better. Rhodes' city, obviously, is a lot better. Starting position's decent. You get to go Crete. You're, you're pretty much not going to get invaded. It's very unlikely that that's going to happen early game. So you do have a good starting position. You've got the ability to make a lot of money with Rhodes, an absolutely obscene amount of money, to be honest, with Rhodes. Um, but, yeah, just the roster. Like, late game. Imagine a late game game as Rhodes. You, you're going to be absolutely screwed by the Romans or if there's True. a strong Antigonids or a strong Achaean. So, yeah. Honestly, though, I still I feel like we should. I feel like the Aetolians and the Achaeans maybe deserve to be upper tier. That is how I'm feeling let's, right now. Let's do it. Let's, we've do, got it. let's a, do it. We've got a lot of Greeks in Ephibes, and I just feel, Let's do it. Let's feel, do it. I feel bad putting them there, especially since I this agree. is the update coming up. For the um, Greeks, yeah. But <laughs> we do have a. a this, I, I've got a feeling that this might be the most controversial one of them all, and that's exclu that's 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 including the Seleucids and all that as well. That we're mm -hmm. probably going to have a big debate over. Um, but Sparta, 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 Sparta. Um, I feel like Sparta deserves to be in Epibartai just because of the cultural impact that it has today. Even though whatever you in Athens. <laughs> Oh, more boy. than Athens? No, wait, oh, wait, you have not finished yet. Combined okay. with how cool they are perceived as being, how badass perceived. they are perceived as being. Yeah, perceived. perceived. The warrior culture, that sort of thing. Right, Athens definitely has a much more larger impact today. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, Athens 100% has more of an impact today. But who cares? Who, like, if you just ask the <laughs> layman on the street, no one's going to care. Oh. Do you know about Socrates? They'll be like, who the fuck's that? Is that, a, is that like a meal or something? You're like, no, it's a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you go, wow. have you heard of Leonidas? They'll be like, yeah, this is Sparta. Do you know? <laughs> so basically, in this, I'm on the side of the dummies. <laughs> I am indignant right now. <laughs> I, I, there's no way that I can put Sparta above Athens, man. That, <laughs> that is, uh, I'm not really a fanboy for either one. But there's no way that I can see myself agreeing with that. Honestly, I I don't. I, I told you this is going to be the most controversial one. I am <laughs> not. A, I am. I am not a big fan of Sparta either. Like I'm not. Like there's people who out there absolutely love Sparta. I don't really care about them. But I feel like they just have an air of coolness. I know we we're going to rate them on how strong they are. Okay, how strong they are. They they're stronger than Athens in terms of the start. They have a stronger roster. Yeah, they're just, safer. In ter yeah, because ter they, they're on the edge, right? Um, in terms of the All historical right. impact, definitely a lot, lot less than Athens. We, we can agree with that. All right. In terms All right. Of Let's how, compromise. In terms of how cool how they are, definitely cooler than Athens. But their roster is kind of a one-trick pony. It's not that That's good. That's true. So, their cavalry so is atrocious. <laughs> what about above Athens, below Boeotia, or between... <laughs> Or above roads, even I don't know, but no, no, no. Their not roster is roads. not that good, man. Uh, the roster is not that good. Their starting position yeah. is better than Athens. That's true. Is I, their starting I, is their starting position better than Boeotia though? Because they're not as sandwiched. They're I, not was, as sandwiched I would say the starting position is better than Boeotia, but I'd say their roster is worse because Boeotia you get the Agima, um, you get some better cavalry. Well, you get actual cavalry. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Actually, cavalry goes a long way in Rome Total War. Yeah, having cavalry is is a lot better than having whatever the shit Spartan light cavalry are. They basically yeah. are, are atrocious. Like they're the worst cavalry. Like I I would prefer to have Prodromoi than them to be honest. Uh, yeah, in basically. a battle because the Prodromoi at least will do a lot of damage with the Javis. As much as I hate missile cavalry, and I mm -hmm. do hate missile cavalry. Everyone knows that I do yeah. not like missile cavalry at all. I would rather use Prodromoi than, than the Spartan Light Cavalry. And again, it's historically accurate. I think I, when I talked to Howell, he was saying um, that uh, at one point, Sparta only had 300 cavalrymen. So that's why you yep. don't get much cavalry. Um, no. But their infantry is decent. It's just not... They don't, they don't get as much as Boeotia. So I'd say, yeah, probably around there. I think, I think just above Athens, in the context of RIS fanboys... Okay, okay, yeah. And I'm saying RIS, comma, fanboys, not RIS <laughs> fanboys. In the context of RIS, Athens, dear Athens fanboys, in the context of RIS, Sparta <laughs> is slightly better 
than Athens, but not oh by much. God, this is, and I'll, and I'll, I'll add to that and say, in, in, in the context of RAS, fanboys of Sparta, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sparta is quite cool. But it's not that good a nation in RAS. It's not stronger than the other nations we put out above it, okay? <laughs> it's, yes. it's a decent nation. I've, I've done a whole campaign on them. You can check that out in the description below. I did a whole campaign in version 0.4. And it was very fun. Like, this, is without, this, is without, this goes without saying, guys. The way we're ranking these nations, like, we both think that all of these nations are fun and good nations to play so much better than vanilla so yeah. so much better and most of like most other sort of mods out there that are vanilla based like we love playing these nations what we're doing is being extra harsh because there's some big hitters coming up that deserve oh, yeah. to be in hetai roy and agima rather than some of these other smaller nations that are really hard so yes. you know you might think we're being harsh but when we get to, like, the Ptolemies and the Seleucids, we don't want the Ptolemies to be next to, you know, the Aetolian League. <laughs> so, no. yeah, um, you know, we, you might think we're being harsh, but we're, we're not. And, uh, you know, everything past the Phoebes, I would say, we really enjoy playing. I'd say Siloy is probably one that where we're like, uh, probably rather not play them. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. everything Phoebes and above, we both really enjoy playing. So... Don't yes. get on our, don't get on our, uh, down our throats saying, oh, you've rated them really low. You, you must hate them. We don't hate them. We like all the factions yeah. in this mod, apart from silo ones, probably. And Crappadocia, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Uh, right. The final Greek faction then, not, uh, you know, not including the, uh, um, the Diadochi or the Diado, Diadochi, Diadochi, whatever. Uh, Syracuse. 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 Yes. Syracuse starts off with a couple cities in 0.5. Four cities. Four cities, which is which is about the same as Aetolian League, and actually, it's more than it's actually more five. than is it five? Yeah, one minor city and four large towns, which is pretty good to be that's, honest. That's a very good starting position, but you're sandwiched yeah. between <laughs> Rome and Carthage. Carthage is not that hard to beat, mm. but Rome. As you're fighting Rome, you're gonna get, well, you can beat Rome as pretty much any faction, I would say, more or less. Maybe, maybe, there's a couple (laughs) that you probably can't beat Rome with, honestly, but Syracuse can beat Rome, Yeah. but it's gonna be a long, hard grind. Yeah, very much so, I agree. I think, I think they might be below Bosporan Kingdom. And above Ooh. Aetolia, because okay. the fact that they can compete with Rome and Carthage, and you might even have to be doing this at the same time, is pretty commendable. Like, Ooh. if you can fight Rome and Carthage at the same time, and you secure Sicily, like, once Sicily is secured, Syracuse is pretty pretty good. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I've, I've actually played quite a bit of Syracuse in my own time as well. Um, and yeah, I would say... Carthage is is a soft target. Carthage is good to go against. The only thing you need to worry about them early game is elephants, and even then, you're all right if you've got a couple of archers with fire arrows. Yeah, um, archers are not or elephants are not hard to beat if you know how to beat them. Yeah. So, um, and Carthage's infantry early game is absolutely a like the paper mm-hmm. paper soldiers basically. Yeah. So, whereas the Syracuse like the Syracuse and Hoplites are, are a much better. I think they've got forty defense, whereas a normal Greek Hoplite has thirty six. They um, should be. I think they should be a little bit better than normal Greek Hoplites. I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, they've got Phoebes. They don't have phalangites. That's the one thing, especially mm-hmm. in the 0.6 roster. They don't have phalangites. And I think no. if they had they phalangites, have thor- they have thoracidae though. Yeah, exactly. If they did have phalangites, I'd be willing to put them probably into epileptoid, but I'd say probably towards the top of epibartai for now, sure. just because they don't have phalangites. And if you're not an experienced, I would say that Syracuse for an experienced player is okay. But I would say yes. if you're not experienced, you're gonna you're gonna get di- you're gonna deaded, drown. deaded pretty quickly. Um, you're gonna drown. So don't play Syracuse if you <laughs> if you're inexperienced or finding the game hard. But if you're an experienced player, I think that's one of the sort of more rewarding factions to play as because who can say, like, what nations can say they've beat Carthage and Rome? And you have a chance yeah. to do that as Syracuse, so, um, yeah. You definitely can. 
I think we've uh, I think we're both in agreement. Stick it at the top of there. I think so. Yeah. So let's move on to. I think we'll go to. Should we go to North Africa next? Seeing as we are around Sicily as well. Um, okay. And we'll start with the smaller ones to start with. Not okay. Um, not uh, not the big one. Um, yeah. So let's go for the. This is the my uh, Sicilii, right? <laughs> <laughs> that should be Masazili because yeah, there we are. These the the um. The tier list factions are in alphabetical order, so Masazili, yeah. and then next to them is Masili, I think. Yeah. Or as we call them, Numidia and yeah. Numidia, because yeah. one is newer than the other. But yeah, yeah. Mas Masazili. Yeah. Let's call them the real name. Siloy. So, yeah, these guys, yeah. <laughs> they. I would say they're better than Masali. Masalia, maybe? I don't know. Um, I don't think so no uh, yeah because these guys are the ones that have they only They're have the smaller one yeah they They're only the have two one. settlements and mm -hmm. the rebel settlements that if, if you don't want to attack carthage you've got rebel settlements that are about a million miles away in the middle of the desert that are really poor so old yeah so you, you're not gonna you're not gonna make a lot of money taking rebel settlements so you're pretty much the only option you have is attacking carthage and mm -hmm. when you do that you're probably gonna get deaded so um yeah i think no. i think they're, they're they're pretty they're they're they're, they're about right they're only there. their only good unit is their uh noble numidian cavalry or whatever yeah you do start um, with one one unit of them and that does yeah. help you out but you can't retrain it anyway so as soon as you've no. lost a few in there <laughs> it's screwed. Yeah. and i would i would say that old media aka Ma massily yeah i think <laughs> old media is better than new media is it better than Massalia, though? As in the next one we're doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is definitely better than uh, the old one because they start with like five settlements. Although there this are... Is, this is old media. This is the original new Midian faction. Yeah. Massily. Uh, as like, yeah, Massily. So start with quite Beta. a few more settlements, making mm -hmm. a lot more money, a bit more like quite spread out still. But I think if you... You know, if you're, again, very hard if you're not an experienced player. If you're an experienced player, you're probably going to do okay with these guys because Carthage is literally one, like, uh, one uh, province over from you. It's bordering you. So, yeah, you can snag Carthage pretty quick. Yeah, snag Carthage, make a load of money, and then there's a lot of other good cities and, and large towns around that region that you right. can enslave the populations and bring your cities up to scratch. Um, so I think, I would say probably bottom of a Phoebe's. I don't think that the, the siloi still i would have put them at the top of siloi but of bottom siloi. of phoebe's bottom of a phoebe's top of siloi that's the, where i want to put them they're kind of like in the middle aren't they like yeah because i think siloi is ones that we probably wouldn't want to want to play and i actually would like to play these guys so that's the only reason why i would put them in a phoebe's is that that's probably the i'm only... surprised you want to play them because they're all all they have really is javelin horsemen, which yeah. I know how fond you are of them. <laughs> when I say want, I say like uh -huh. I would, like I would, you know, yeah. It's it's hard to say. Like when I say want, I would say like I, I'd actually quite like to play it mainly because you get to just take on Carthage straight away. You're kind of forced yes. into it as as a challenge more than anything. I like sure. want to. I wouldn't want to play them for the roster or anything like that because, like you say, I don't like missile cav so but no. as a challenge i think i would quite like to play them just for that just to to try and take on carthage and beat them um all right and speaking of carthage do you want to do you want to take the heat on this one? <laughs> oh guy oh boy <laughs> carthage is a pretty hard faction to play True. in in ris but they're not impossible okay i what you have to do basically is uh but well, you have a couple options you can either try and put all your effort into killing the the new media and old media mm. saley and masazali or you can put a lot of effort into taking syracuse yeah um and then you have another army that's in the west and you need to use that army to take over spain or as many spanish settlements as you can because they have a lot of um gold and silver mines in spain yeah. um your Carthage start is going to be very spread out and pretty hard, but I think if you can either secure Sicily or secure the African homeland, 
you're going to be set. Yeah. Um, historically, I mean, what is Carthage historically important for? Losing to Rome <laughs> and making a couple colonies, I guess. Uh, um, I they need. To, I want to say that they should either be Belectoi or maybe Agima depending on how the rest of the tier list turns out. Yeah. But I think putting them in Epilectoi to start with is yeah. a is a safe bet. I'm and just I'm just imagining the the comments now. Carthage is a <laughs> direct quote. What did Carthage what is Carthage famous for? What? Losing for <laughs> losing to Rome. <laughs> I mean, okay, look, all, the only the only good military that came out of Carthage is Hannibal. Yeah. And Hannibal was a rogue general for most of his time. He just like yeah. went to Spain with some army and was like, all right, I'm in charge of here now. And yeah. then he invaded Rome later. But he wasn't like Carthage itself wasn't saying like, hey, Hannibal, go do all this. I don't think if, if, if I understand yeah. the history correctly. Um, I would put I would put Hannibal very high on the tier list. Yeah. But Carthage, I think Epilecto is pretty fair. Yeah, I think I think just above Bosporan Kingdom, just because of your start, you know, you start with mm -hmm. thirty-four regions. I mean, yeah. if you can't make money from that, yeah. then the, you know, you need to yeah, do no, some more campaign management training. Any <laughs> faction that starts with like five or six cities at least is going to be fine in the long term exactly. for a player. And I, I, I would just like to add my comments on Carthage as well. I, I have played them on the the, the channel. Uh, live yep. stream quite a long time ago on 0.4. Um, that was the old map. Yeah, the old map. And I think still the same issues in terms of, uh, of how you manage them uh, are there today. You start like really spread out, like you said. Um, if you get... like What happened to me playing on 0.4 was basically I did shit in Spain. And, you know, it basically just... The Spanish just absolutely destroyed that end of the empire. And then I'm too far away from my recruitment hub, which is mainly Carthage. So, you know, you can struggle with that a lot. So I don't think it deserves to go higher. Um, and obviously, early game, when you're fighting Rome, you will get absolutely demolished, vaporized by Rome. Like, vaporized. Your troops will, will be vaporized. They, they won't be there anymore. There won't even be bodies. They'll just be atoms on the floor. <laughs> Like, <laughs> Rome, Rome's troops are so much better than yours. Until you get your They're reforms, you do get some good good troops, like the um, the African Infantry, like the Sacred Band. So when you get your Sacred Band, you're going to be okay. Uh, they'll still probably be better, but, yeah, before then, you really do struggle in terms of your troops. They, they're not good compared to Rome. And to be honest, not many people have good troops compared to Rome. So, no. you know, it's not... It's not unusual, but at the same time, Rome is going to be one of your main enemies. So, you know, it doesn't matter if Atropatine doesn't have troops that can uh, stand up to Rome because they're not going to come into contact with them. Whereas Carthage, it's going to happen sooner or later. So, um, yeah, I think Epilecto is fair, to be fair. Um, also, you you definitely can beat Rome as Carthage. Yeah. It is doable. You did it yourself. Yeah. Uh, but you have to use... Uh, mass assault doctrine and a <laughs> lot a lot a lot of micro so it's not like you can't just like if you you can't just right click an attack order and be like oh my guy's lost this game is too hard yeah. because no carthage is like and that's that's literally what hannibal had to do is he had to do some insane micro and some insane tactics to actually pull off as much as he did against rome and he still wasn't able to you know finish them off and not yeah. even close Exactly. Um, yeah, you can. Of course, you can. Yeah, you can beat Rome. It's uh, it's definitely doable. It's just very, very difficult. Um, uh, and it should be because it's Rome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, I think Carthage, like, because you are an empire still, and you're still a big nation, you're still going to end up making a lot of money, and um, eventually you will have good troops. And if you don't have good troops, you can get good mercenaries from Sicily. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got plenty of options. Plenty of scope to expand as well. Um, in terms of what I would recommend if you are playing Carthage, is I would go for the Namidian factions first, just to make sure that your borders are secure. Because if you send all your troops into Sicily and then they attack, you know, it's not you're not going to be screwed, but 
you might as well get rid of them early. And they're not that strong. They're Namidians, right? They, <laughs> they just have javelin cavalry, which are annoying to deal with. But apart from that, you should be okay. So we're both in agreement, yeah. I guess. Yeah, cool. uh, you, you summed it perfectly. That's a perfect summary. Yeah, cool. So should we move to Iberia? Seems we're close to uh, uh, Carthage. Sure, let's go with Iberia. So, Aravachi. Oh, that's a, that, oh, that one. That's that one. The cool. RG, yeah, Aravachi. So, there's a lot well, of there's a lot of factions in this mod, guys. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, well, if I remember correctly, the Aravachi kind of kicked your butt when you played as Carthage. Oh yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. Just had to get that one in there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, they did absolutely. Yeah, they 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 absolutely ruined me. To be honest, I I, I was. I was running, running for my life in the West, <laughs> uh, in Morocco. Like literally, yep. they just were pummeling us like with uh, full stacks of uh, of missile calf. <laughs> and my poor like, what are, what are they called? Libyan Libyan light infantry or something? We're just getting yeah. absolutely just destroyed. <laughs> yeah. I was sending all the young boys from Carthage off to die. To be honest, <laughs> it was like it was like Napoleonic France in 1812. It was like it was oh, a disaster. No. Um, but, but yeah, they did absolutely kick my butt, but, um, they only start with two settlements, but there I is, believe a, that's right. there is a lot of breathing room around them. You know, they're not bordering anyone, loads of rebel no. settlements for them to go into mm -hmm. in terms of the roster. They've got great heavy infantry, like most Celtic factions, to be fair. Good uh, infantry. Yeah. Early game. I'd say like before you get to minor city and large city sort of levels, Probably not mm -hmm. quite as good. Like, you get the Kytrati and stuff, which aren't really that good. Um, no. And, you know, all your cav is missile cav. So if you like missile cav, all the mm -hmm. Iberian factions are going to be good for you. But if you don't like missile cav, then probably not as much. Although you can get the good heavy infantry when you get a larger settlement. So I don't know. I don't re I really don't know where to go with this one. Because your start isn't, isn't great, there but it's not hard. Yeah, um, you just have a lot of rebel cities that you need to take yeah. to to begin, and you're far away from the closest enemy faction is probably. Um, I'm looking at the map in my head. There's the Editani, Editani. on the east coast of yeah. Spain. Um, the the Aravachi start more in the, like the central north of Spain, yeah. but not on the northern coast. Like it's still in the mountains. Yeah. Um. This is a hard one. Yeah, really hard. They're not, they're not bad, but there's nothing very good about them yeah. either. <laughs> like, I, I feel harsh putting them above, like, Athens and Sparta, but at the same time, like, they probably, in terms of the context of the mod, are actually better. But <laughs> They probably are better. Um, and also, I think the Aravachi historically did... I know the Lusitani put up a good fight against the Romans, Yeah, but I don't know about the Aravachi. I'm, I'm not as... I'm not so sure on their history. Hmm. Oh man, dude, that's a hard one, dude. Yeah. Well, I, what? <sighs> we might have to start moving things around a little bit. We might have to start moving things around. I kind of want to just put them like at the bottom of Epibatai because they're not yeah. hard at all, but they're not that exciting. But they are arguably easier than yeah, a lot Rose easier. and Sparta and. Boeotian League, so I think maybe it's the bottom of Epibatai, and yeah. then we can we can shift things around as the tier list. Because I yeah. mean, we still have a lot of factions to rank, man. Oh my god! <laughs> and the one thing I would say with these guys that that might make them a bit better than the other Iberian factions is actually when I've when I've looked at the map, around them there's a load of large towns with roads, and I know that's a very min maxi thing, but you know you know me, I'm going to try and min max as much as possible the campaign management side and around their settlements they actually have some decent large towns that have roads whereas the okay. other ones uh, the editani do have two uh, two settlements to the south of them with mines so that's okay. one thing for the editani but the uh, the lusitanians on the the west coast in portugal they mm -hmm. literally just have shit settlements around them they don't have any with roads none with mines so no. And there's Carthage nearby as well, which yeah, could be a problem. So I'd say the, the Aravachi is probably the best out of the Iberians. So if we go for I've... the Editani, which is east coast of uh, of Iberia, which one's there? I thought theirs was yellow. I thought their sign uh, was yellow. It's, oh, you just it's the one next to Epirus, right to the left of Epirus. Oh, that... It's the 
Uh, that no, one, left. yeah, that one, yeah. Yes. It is yellow. Yeah, good. I just didn't. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I would say below. Yeah. Uh, Aravachi is fair. And They're... then probably the the Lus uh, the Lusitanians, which is mm -hmm. the, that one. Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, right next to it. That's the Lugii. This one. Right yeah. Next... Yes. Yeah. That's the Lusitani. So, do we want to put that there as well, or? I mean, either uh, way. Because they're both the loser they're... Tani. The loser Tani can go in Siloy for all I care. Um, <laughs> what about but, <laughs> um, I don't know if they're as bad as Crapidocha. No. Um, um, I think theirs all right. Yeah, I mean, all the Iberian factions—they're all grouped together because they all have the yeah. same roster. They're, they're, they're yeah, all they, we haven't on worked Iberia. on them yet. Uh, yeah, let's, let's obviously. Let's get through yeah. them because they're not. There's not much to say about them. At yeah. The moment. So you know that. You, if you want to play in Iberia, you've got plenty of room to expand. It's not hard. So if you're wanting a, kind of an easy, easier Celtic game or an Iberian game, they're the ones for you. Yes. So let's do the Celts then because there's a lot of them. So we'll do uh, right. sort of like, we'll start with Gaul. Um, yeah. So let's start with Gaul and then we can get into some of the, the fun ones that have uh, that have been done. Right, so let's start with the Celtic factions, and we can start with the A Dewey, right? So let's have a look on the map for them. So, because I want to say they have about two or three starting cities, uh, more left and south. Left. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, I was just completely uh, in the wrong place. Oh, Here we are. A little north. Yep. So we've got. I think they got four. So they got four. Spacebar real fast. Just. What's that? Spacebar real fast, so we can. Oh see yeah, the there we are. One, two, yeah, four cities. Four cities. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're probably the strongest Celtic faction in this neighborhood. I think they're stronger than Arverni and the Allobrogues. Yeah, Al Arverni have three, and the Allobrogues have like two, I think, just two, and they're pretty much backed up against the Alps anyway. Um. So we can do probably all these three right now because they all have pretty similar rosters. Again, they're all Celtic, so they got the Celtic roster, which yes. we know is is very strong. Um, the heavy infantry later on with the Celts is is really really good, uh, and most of them get some really decent cavalry as well. Uh, stronger like sort of Celtic noble cavalry, that sort of thing. Um, but out of these, you know, I would I would say a Dewey at the top. Then followed these. by Arverni, yeah. Arter, followed by Alubros. Yeah, I think all our bros. At least the like, I think the one thing going for the Arverni though is, you know, they're not hemmed in in any way. Same thing goes for uh, the Adui. Whereas the Alubros, they're just they're against the Alps and also against two nations that are. If you're the player, you're going to get attacked, aren't you, by the AI if you're bordering them? So uh, most likely, yeah. So I think that's probably right. But where do we put them then? Where are we actually going to put them? So. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> this is hard. Okay. So, listen, fanboys. I'm sorry, <laughs> but the Celts do have better a better roster than Rhodes, and Boeotia, and yeah. Sparta, and Athens, and. Uh, old media they have a better roster they have yeah good infantry they have a dismounted bodyguard as well as a mounted bodyguard which is mm. a really mean unit their dismounted bodyguard is very strong and yeah. you can have that at the start of the game um they haven't been remastered yet so the celtic units are all basically copy paste um there's small differences in the rosters but nothing major um I think the Celtic units are better than the Iber Iberian units, but yeah. I would say that Aetolia and Achaea are probably still better than the Celts overall. Because um, the yeah. Aetolians and the Celts, or sorry, the Aetolians and the Achaeans, once you conquer Greece, you're going to have way more money than barbarians conquering Gaul. Yeah, and they're so also I think, cooler in my opinion, but... <laughs> yes, that as well. Um, so I think if we put... Yeah, a Dewey below Akia and above Aravachi, that's a good that's a yeah. good kind of niche for the Celts. Um Allobroge is this one, right? Mm -hmm. we'll stick them there, and then it was the Arverni, which, which are the red one. that one. Yes. Yeah. They're in the middle. 
So a lot of people in Epibartai at the minute. <laughs> At the but, minute, but it's it's kind of the middle category. It should have yeah, the most. Yeah, and and we kind of grouped. Oh, obviously, these guys are all grouped together because obviously their their rosters aren't remastered yet. Um, so when the, when the rosters are remastered, you know we can revisit it and say, well, this 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 nation has this roster, this nation has that roster, whatever. Uh, but at the minute, they've all got similar rosters, all in the same region. So I think, although I kind of have an argument here for putting the Allobrogues below the Iberians, honestly, because. You know what? You're right. Because the start Cause they're, is they're like, more hemmed in. Yeah, the start is really hemmed in, and like you've only got two settlements, and you're gonna have to fight the, like an, a, a nation straight away. Um, That's whereas, acceptable. Whereas the Iberians, like, although your your roster is really good with the Yellow Brogues, the Iberians have a decent-ish roster, but they've got so much space, and you can take your conquest, you know, as long as you want um, for there. So, should we move on to the Bell guy? The now, bravest are the Belge. The Belge, sorry. I think I think we might disagree on this one. Okay. But I think the Belge deserve to be in Epilectoi. Um, the Belge are the strongest cult faction purely because uh well they have I guess they have two things really going for them. One is the um their start position is very good compared to a lot of other factions. They have like five or six, maybe even seven cities. Uh, let um, let's double check that. But I know they have a lot of cities. They have a Celtic five. roster, which five. Okay. Yeah. They have a Celtic roster, which is a strong roster, and they also have a special unit uh, called I want to say the the Belge Champions. Yeah, the Be Belgic which, Champions. Yeah. Which are an elite infantry unit with axes rather than swords, and mm -hmm. the axes are really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So the Belge being in Epilectoi, maybe above Bosporin but below Carthage, yeah, I, I is think, a good spot for them. Like, I'll just explain my reasoning on that. It's it, everything you've said so far, Mosca. Com yeah, completely agree. Like the roster's really good, but just their starting position is so good. There's there's literally no one around them. All the, like most of the settlements around them are all don't have walls. So you can pretty much chain through like three, four settlements in a turn if you really want to. And your roster is is the strong Celtic roster. And you've got no competition. No mm -hmm. nations around you. Probably you can probably take thirty settlements and then you can then you'll be um, you know, uh, up against someone else. So you could probably have an empire, I would say thirty settlements or so, and then you have to fight another nation and imagine how strong you will be building up your nation to be in 30 settlements in that region you're going to be so strong at that point you'll just roll over whoever you come up against until you get to say rome so i think yeah like gen in my opinion i think the bell the the belge are one of the strongest nations in the game based on that um and i know that's a very controversial opinion i'm sure a lot of the mod team have just puked when i've said that right now but from a player's perspective i, I think they are one of the one of the stronger nations uh, just because of that starting position mixed with the celtic roster you know julius caesar said the bravest are the belge exactly <laughs> and after everything you've said i kind of want to put them above carthage oh no no I also, uh, I also you kind of do, case. you know. You've kind of made a good case, <laughs> and the the Belge roster is definitely better than the Carthage roster. I, Maybe they I, could even be our first entry into a Gima. Who knows? I don't know if that's too generous. Oh, th th that yeah, that would definitely make a few people puke. But um, I I really really want to, but I, I at the same time my whole spine is tingling, telling me not to do that because of the amount of hate we'll get. It feels people. dirty, doesn't it? It, it but, does, but it also kind of makes sense. Well, you know, bad publicity is good publicity. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's not that good. But let's let's make them our first Agima just for yeah, fun. Yeah, um, yeah. I I think I think that's right because. Genuinely, that starting position is filthy. Like, they, they've got no... You've got no competition for ages, and your roster's fantastic. So I, I think that's genuinely a good option there. Um, and I can't wait until that roster's remastered, because then it's going to be even, even cooler. 
<laughs> Maybe yeah. even stronger. The um, closest competition that uh, Belge has is the Trinovantes. Yeah. And no offense, but our Britain faction is kind of terrible. Yeah. I'm like, trying to, nice like, chariots, dude. That's, they that's... can go in silo. Yeah. Or you can have a dosha. <laughs> they're, they're pretty bad. <laughs> nice chariots, dude. Straight into silo. Oh, I don't know. I think they're better than the uh, than the new Midian faction. Yeah, because, I mean, they also don't have... They have oh, the same I... advantage that... um. They might Bowie be better has, than Massalia. No, no competition. Yeah, All right. I think they're better I'm than Massalia because they don't, they don't have any competition again. Easy. But the, the thing is, like, yeah, their roster's not as good. I know this sounds kind of weird putting the Bell game up there and Trinovantas down here when it's kind of similar reasons. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the roster's just not as good as the, uh, the Bell game roster. And Chariots, honestly, at this time period, Chariots were kind of trash. I'm sorry all you, like you know, ancient Egypt stands and stuff. Like, chariots by this time period really weren't good. Everyone had found out how to get rid of them. So the Britons going around on chariots and, and like, as much as it looks cool and it feels cool, like, yeah, you're not going to have a great time with chariots. They're going to get cut and down very easily. On top of what that... You're saying? Sorry, go on, go on. I was going to say, that on top of that, something. you can't use them in the cities. So, <laughs> so like, they're pointless in cities, so... Um, I want to add to that, the British chariots are so bad that originally, when we were working on 0 0.4, I believe, originally we had the British, um, or Britain, um, Britain generals may. on chariots, but the chariots were so bad that we were like, no, we can't do this, we're going to give them a dismounted infantry bodyguard instead, um, because... Those light chariots are just not a good unit. And I remember also when you were playing your Carthage yeah. stream and you were using like the Libyan chariots and you're like, oh, these are they're chariots. They're going to be good. I was like, those are the crappy light chariots like the Britons have. They're yeah. terrible. Like yeah, they're, they're just terrible. They literally would charge in and then just die. <laughs> the problem is, guys, like if you don't know uh, people out there, like the bigger the hitbox, the hitboxes for these units the more hits they're going to take, right? Makes sense. And chariots are massive, so the hitbox for them is massive. So if they charge into anything, they'll get like 10... If they charge into infantry, for example, the infantry will have like 10 hits on them in one go. And that's why they get killed so quickly. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I see a, people in, a few people in the comments now like, I can't believe you've put them in silo. St. George wouldn't be happy, mate. So... <laughs> Um, I, I want to add one more thing to what he just said. The light chariots are terrible. The scythe chariots in Rome Total War are overpowered. Yeah, those um, the scythe are good. And the uh, factions that have scythe chariots, like Pontus and mm. uh, Seleucid, um, well, those units are monstrous. Yeah. But they're not the same chariots that the Britons and um, that the Britons have. Yeah, the, the Brit. The... Sorry, Gob. No, the, just the the diff there is a difference between the chariots, and there are good chariots and there are bad chariots. Yeah. Um, are we just going to ignore my North FC reference there, or, or, or uh, yeah, we'll just carry on. We'll <laughs> Let's carry on. Yeah, we'll just we'll just ignore that that ever happened. Um, right. Uh, let's move into Germania then. We'll start with the Kimbri. Um, Kimbri. Did Kimbri get the ability to hoard? Do I remember that correctly? Um, honestly, I don't know if we gave it to them or not should we have uh, a look okay what have you learned that yeah that they're screwed but they do have this little army up here i didn't actually even see that until right now oh it's hiding <laughs> yeah <laughs> i bet you some people have played this and never seen that army until like the end of the game and been like what the fuck <laughs> yeah it's possible <laughs> but yeah no it's it's shit like you're, yeah you're, 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 yeah you're, you're screwed uh, right, well, so the Kimbri, let's have a look at the start. Unfortunately, you can't hoard quite yet. Um, that might be added in later, I I, I guess, because of you you know, don't know. what the Kimbri are. But, yeah, we don't know at the minute. So let's have a look back at the Kimbri. Yeah, we both think probably Siloy. It's Historically speaking, the Kimbri fought a long war against the Romans and did a lot of damage. Hmm. Um, but that was way later in history, not 270 
BC. That was yeah. like that was like once the Rome once Rome was an empire. Hmm. Um, in RIS, they got to be silo. I don't know, man. They're like they're not they're not exciting. Yeah. Also, like their their start is very very difficult. Like, well, not hugely difficult. You're probably all right once you've taken a couple of settlements, but then down south of you is just the Suebi and the Lugii, so Lugii, and the chatty. So, yeah, and the Chatty. So I don't think you're going to be strong enough to really take them on by the time you get to that point. And all the settlements around you are tiny towns that mm -hmm. are, that will not make you any money. So yeah, I think I think Silo is probably probably worth it. Um, so next, what should should we do the Chatty then now? Yeah, which is that one. This one, that one. yeah. So, uh, uh, you you go ahead. Are the chatty Celtic, or are they? They're. I want to say they're a hybrid faction. I think Imbri are hybrid in the sense that they have a little bit of Celtic and a little bit of Germanic, or maybe it's like their early game is Celtic and their late game is Germanic. I'm yeah. not a hundred percent sure how they work. Um, can we look at Chatty on the map real fast? Yeah, let's have a look at uh, at Chatty. Because I think they have a couple cities. Yeah. So, yeah, the Chatty are here in the middle between, like, the one province away from the Suebi, two provinces away from the Volkai. Over in the west, you know, a lot of land to expand into. Uh, but I feel like they're just going to get encroached on the east by much stronger nations. I mean, the Suebi aren't too strong, but they do start with a decent army. Like, that's a lot more decent than the armies you get. So, yeah, I think... I think Chatty, yeah, they're not going to be great, are they? <laughs> uh, they're probably Siloy. So, yeah. Um, feels harsh putting them in, in Siloy, but at the same time, I kind of agree. <laughs> uh, I don't see... I think you could probably put Massalia higher than Kimbri, at least. Um, what? Massalia. Oh, yeah. And the Trinovantas. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Trinovantas is cool, though, because <laughs> they have chariots. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, the chariots. Um, yeah, let's keep moving, man. This yeah. is getting long. Yeah, this is getting very, very long. So we can we can probably do all the Kel all those Germanic ones now. So mm -hmm. the Suebi, yes. probably... They have a decent roster, but so does I don't the know. Chatty, They're just not though. exciting. Yeah. yeah. So probably back of Ephebes, I'd say. All right, let's put them in the back of Ephebes. But... I think, um, so then there was the Volkai. A no, Lugia. Volkai are actually Celtic, I think. Yeah, but we can... We forgot we can, about them. Yeah, Lugai, so Lugai is this one, right? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, Lugai is actually quite good. I would say that mm -hmm. they're quite... Because they've got loads they, of settlements. Are yeah. they better than Swaby? Yeah, five settlements. They've got the same roster. They've got five settlements. They've also got free land all the way in the east. And you could yeah. probably take out the Swaby very quickly as them because... Are they better than Sparta? Oh, I think they're better than the Massilii. Okay. Mm, no, I think worse than Sparta and Athens. All right. All the Germanic people, because they're, they're the, that's the highest the Germ Germanians are going, so... <laughs> that's that's fine. Poor Germanian people. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all the people. I think we should also put the Namidia at the bottom of here. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Luigi, I'm... Yeah. Oh. I feel like... I feel like Luigi... <laughs> Luigi? Luigi. Luigi. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think you could make a case that they're easier than Athens. Oh, yeah. They're definitely um, easier. And they're not got, as exciting. They've got a better roster as well. They've probably got a better roster than Sparta as well. Uh, Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so maybe I think right there. Yeah. I think right there. Sandwiched in between two warring factions, so yeah, they can enjoy themselves. And then Volkai, which is Celtic. I believe uh, they have a quite a few cities. Volkai, uh, yeah, uh, only three. Only, only three. three. Yeah. Um, and they're bordering right. the boy as well, uh, and they're obviously chatty close in the north. The Alps down mm. south. Um, I yeah, I think they've got to be. Probably around the Suebi somewhere. Probably. Sure. I, I know they're Celtic, but... Yeah. Although we did put... Nah. A, yeah. I think these Celtic nations up here were all together because they're all in a relatively decent situation. 
I feel like the Volkai are probably in a slightly worse one, like slightly worse. Uh, all the Germanic nations around them, they're also probably taking Germanic settlements that are the wrong culture. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the Alps to the south is not a very rich region unless you're building mines. But early game, you're going to have to save up quite a bit of money to build yeah. those mines. So Mines early game are not the right choice. Yeah, so I think unless you've got a load of money. Unless you have a lot, uh, of, a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, I think probably above the Suebi because they're Celtic. Better roster. Yeah. Um, is that... Everyone for the Celts, then, apart from, like, the Allo, um, the boy. I oh, will do the boy. We'll do the boy. That's these guys. Right? Boi are next to Volke, yeah. Boi are an interesting one, because yeah. they start off next to Rome, and then they also have settlements, like, in Bohemia. Yeah, um, exactly. They're pretty hard. They have yeah. decent units, but they're not that great. But I like their faction icon personally. I think they have a cool faction icon. Yeah, I also think they're quite cool in the fact that it's the only nation that, that really has a split start, unless you're talking mm -hmm. about across a sea. But they are yeah. split via the land. And like that, mm -hmm. that um, trying to, to bring those two points together while also fighting Rome off is a pretty cool prospect, honestly, and pretty interesting prospect. So I'd it's say, doable. I'd say they're quite an interesting nation as a whole. Um, yeah, but they're not very strong in, at the start. Yeah, because you think, split. I think the the split start makes them harder than Athens. Ooh, really? I, you know, well, I guess the the difference is Athens. You have the risk of getting KO'd. Yeah. Boei, if you lose your cities in one place, you, you kind of have a second life. Yeah. But I don't know, man. Like, I feel like Boei is pretty hard, but fun. Yeah, I'd, I'd put them above Athens, to be honest, in terms of the okay. game gameplay. Um, okay. Probably not above Sparta or the... I, I, I don't know. Lugiae are stronger than them. Well, like, What do you think about here, between the Lugiae and Athens? I think that's a fair spot for them. Yeah. Um, cool. Right, should we move on to the Balkans, then? Um, All right. The R-D-A-I-I-I-I. Yeah, Siloy. They suck. Yeah. I mean, for some reason, in like the AI seems to do fantastically well with them. Mm -hmm. I'd say they're but, worse than the Chatty, probably worse than Massalia, but better than like these yeah. guys. I mean, their roster is is very limited at the minute. It's not been remastered. It's no. only like the top, it's only like ten units or eight units or something. So yeah, we can't really put them above that because yeah, they've not had their roster remastered. They do for some reason. When you're playing the game and not playing them, they always seem to have a massive empire. I don't know they, how, but they always seem to do well as the AI. I, I don't know why, but they do. Like they just they do. go into Rebel Land and they just auto resolve it. Um, yeah, I guess it works for the AI, but their faction roster is not very good. They start with yeah three cities. I want to say maybe four. Um, but it's there's just, only one. I think. Really? Yeah. I know they had a couple of cities. I think it's only one. Let, let, should we have a look? Let's just... South, south. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, in 0 0.6, they have a couple more cities. Spoiler Yeah, alert. they do start, like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. But there's a lot more nation. There's a lot more uh, yeah, settlements, yeah, yeah. isn't no, there? So. Doesn't count. Doesn't count. They do start with a, a few troops, like a decent amount of troops. But look at the rebel settlements around here. Like, you're going to, like, one battle, you're probably going to wipe out quite a lot of your troops in just one battle fighting these, like, scaling mm -hmm. the walls. Yeah, no, they're, uh... So, yeah, Silo's probably... It's probably quite difficult. I know they're only rebel settlements. You're not fighting another nation. But look at the amount of garrisons in these places. They, like, mm. there's a lot of garrison. You're gonna struggle scaling, like, doing a siege against them. Like, most players will struggle sieging down these stone-walled cities just with whatever troops you've got there. So, I would say they're, for most players, pretty difficult. Um, yes. So, yeah, let's get that back up. So, I'd say, yeah, probably probably Siloy. Uh, have I put I them in already? Silo. Yeah, we've already put them uh, in. Yeah. Probably better than the, the Britons and the Kimbri, but uh, actually, probably not. <laughs> no. They're pretty bad. Yeah, not, without the remastered roster, probably down there. Yeah. Um, who else have we got there? We got the score Disky, which is yes. uh, this one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which are a Celtic nation in the middle right. of the Balkans. Mm -hmm. uh, start with three settlements. They've got loads of space to spread into as well. There's not mm -hmm. really any nearby enemies. Um, oh. And, of course, they get a Celtic roster, 
which is great. Uh, they do get some uh, chariots, so... <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Galatian chariots, bro. Galatian oh, oh, chariots. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I think these guys are pretty comparable to the Lusitani. Yeah. In terms of their situation. Where do we put them? Up here, uh, so. Not Lusitani. Ar uh, yeah, Aravachi. The Aravachi. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say they're pretty comparable to, the, to them. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to put them up here because, like, they're a Celtic nation surrounded by non-Celtic nations, but the land is... A lot of the land is Celtic. It's not Illyrian. Mm -hmm. So they've still got a good culture to spread into. They've got loads of settlements to spread into pretty pretty nicely without hitting an enemy. And, you know, your biggest enemies are going to be the Thracians uh, and the Dacians. Um, but by that time, you should be pretty big. And if you make a run right. for the coast, you can take out the RDAIIII very quickly. <laughs> yeah. So your, your your units will definitely outclass the, the yeah. RDAI. So like Without you can, doubt. and if you get to the coast, you can start trading with Rome and start making some serious cash. So like yeah, I think they're a pretty decent nation to be honest. Yeah, um, I agree. Right, Getai then. I think you're gonna have to lead on the Getai because I haven't they actually. Get yeah, really seen these guys too much. The Gete are Dacians. Yeah. So they have um they have Falx infantry. Mm. They have I believe I don't know I don't think this is implemented yet, but they're supposed to have horse archers early game and then mid to late game they reform into more like Thracian and Celtic style units. Yeah. Uh with like heavy infantry and um more like armored units. Um, the get a, uh, they, they, like, they don't start in a, in a really strong position. You know, they got, only got two, two cities. Tylus is nearby. Tylus, Tylus is, is nearby. nearby. But along the coast, like Pentic, like, um, Pontic Pentapolis, or what's mm -hmm. represented, represents Pontic Pentapolis, is a load of rich Greek cities. Like, rich big like minor cities and large towns that will make you loads of money um that can trade all trade with each other all got stone walls all got ports all got roads so like i would say and like with the falksmen i think all the nations with falksmen have incredibly strong rosters because those units are really strong <laughs> they're pretty dangerous um, um so i'd say like I say they're they're in the Epibartai, but oh, I, I think yeah. they're better than a Dewey. I think yeah. they're better than a Dewey at least. Yeah. Probably better than a Kia, but not as good as Atolia. Yeah, I think we we should probably move these round a bit. I feel bad yeah. having all the Celts above these guys because these guys, like as much as the Achaean roster is really good, mm -hmm. Celtic roster is really uh, really good as well. Uh, you know, Celtic rosters are definitely better than the Aetolian roster. Probably, okay. be probably better than the Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Wow. Uh, stabbing you through the heart every time I say that. <laughs> uh, probably well. better than the Syracusan roster, but that's only because they have really strong heavy infantry late game. But, yeah, I mean, I'm happy with this. I like having the Greeks at the top, to be honest. I think that's okay. I like having Well, the thing you have to remember is once a Gr any Greek faction conquers Greece, yeah. they basically have unlimited money. Yeah. The barbarians... Uh, it takes it takes them a lot more to get that loads of money stage. Yeah, and in, um, in terms of so it, long term, their economy is better, even if at the start they're a little weaker. Yeah, and in terms of interesting campaigns, like you're gonna have a much more interesting campaign with any of these four than you are with any of them. Yes. Like, I think By we've got to take that into account. Like, even though these are they, like all four of these are gonna be harder than mm -hmm. pretty much all of them apart from the Alabroges. But it's going to be so much more interesting. It's going to be really yeah. interesting that that campaign that you have. Uh, so and I hey, think... the hardest, the harder campaigns are usually a lot more fun. Like a Rhodes campaign or a Sparta campaign is probably going to be more enjoyable than an Aravachi campaign. Yeah, but exactly. It's ranked lower because it is more challenging. Yeah, and you know some some players won't be able to play 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 that because it's that hard. So, like, yeah, I think. I think we're, we're ranking them well, but I think we've, we, we're taking into account that interest as well in a lot of these. That's why, say, like, the, the, like Rhodes is up here rather than... Like, the Lugiai 100% have a better starting position than Rhodes. 
But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Rhodes is going to be more interesting and more fun to play, I would say, than the mm -hmm. Lugia. Currently, obviously, when the when the new map comes out and when uh, all the units are remastered, we'll have to have another look at this because it's going to be completely yeah. different. But this is this is the zero point five tier list. Exactly. And exactly. eventually, we'll have to make a new one. But for now, this is a good stage to yeah. make it. So, should we go on to Tylus then? Tylus. Tylus. Sure. Um, hmm. I feel like Tylus is pretty boring. I played a campaign as Tylus a while back. Yeah. A long while back, honestly. But it was back when Point Five first released. And... I think... Probably around... Vol'K is probably where they're at. So over here. Yeah, somewhere around there. They're like... Yeah. They're nothing special. They're kind of boring in my opinion, but like... They have a. They start off like near the Gete and basically in between the Gete and the Odrysian Kingdom. Yeah. Um. So they have a, quite a good options for expansion, but they are dealing with the fact that a lot of those nearby cities are not their culture. Yeah, they're Celtic, which, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. I would say right there is probably a good spot, and we don't need to elaborate too much more on them unless you want to add no, a comment. No, no. They've got chariots, but again, it's Galatian chariots, so it's not Scythe yeah. chariots, so it doesn't matter. No. Uh, but uh, Adrissians then. Let's have a look at the Adrissians. I, I like the Adrissians. I think they're cool. So They have a good roster. Yeah, they've got a really... Especially if we look at the 0 0.6 roster, they've got a really good yes. roster. Run for four, right? The Adrissian Royal... Is it the Royal Peltas, the Royal Guard, or, or what they call? I think it's the Odrysian Royal Guard. Yeah, they're. I might be wrong though. Really strong. So, mm -hmm. um, your starting position in 0 0.5 though, you've only got one settlement, haven't you? You've got. I believe so. Thrace. Is it? What I would say with the, the Odrysian starting position is that it's, it's not bad, but it's a starting position that you have to be very careful with. Because it can go from being good to being horrendous in like three turns if you do the wrong moves. <laughs> like, yeah, if you, you have the Seleucids right next to you, honestly. Yeah, if you attack be... the Seleucids, then like you can you can go from zero to a hundred very quickly. And the same thing with the Antigonids. You're close to the Antigonids, so you've got to just pick your enemies carefully. And I would say Tylus, the Getai, and like those sort of and um, the the Thracian. Uh, areas along with the Pontic sort of coast uh, on the Black Sea is where you want to go rather than going south into Greece. That's to start mm -hmm. with. Then later on go into Greece when you're strong enough. Um, but I, I do think... think good good I, idea. Yeah, I do think they're, they're a decent nation though. Relatively, like I say, the start could either be fantastic and easy for you or it could be you're dead in, <laughs> in three turns depending on what you do. So quite variable. I'd say Epibartai. I'd say quite in the middle of Epibartai somewhere. Um, maybe. I'd say, maybe. I'd say better than Getai, honestly, with the new roster. But... Yeah, all right. Fair enough. I think, yeah, probably... Yeah, definitely with the new roster. I think they, they deserve to be above there, especially with the, the those Royal Guards. They are very, mm. very strong. Um, Bithynia. Bithynia. Uh, yeah. Uh, you... That's Armenia, next uh, to them. Yeah, there we are. No, nope, that's that true team. No, there we are. Back yeah, to that one. <laughs> it's yes. red. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, Bithynia is pretty similar to Odrysian. Yeah, I, I think um, their roster is honestly better than the Odrysian one. It's more expansive. Um, it it does include some Greek units. The Odrysians don't have Greeks, so yeah. maybe yeah, maybe above Odrysians. The one thing I would say against them though is that they start at war with the Seleucids. Right, so, but we can deal with that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the Seleucids and Anatolia are kind of lackluster because yeah. they've got too many enemies to contend with. That, and mm -hmm. it's it's very realistic. Like, it's too far away from the capital, and they don't know what to do. Like, they don't know whether to fight the Ptolemies, whether to stay at peace. They don't know whether to fight you. So I've actually played some Bithynia on a beta of 0 0.6, mind you, but it was very fun. And uh, I okay. just basically absolutely chained through Seleucid cities because they couldn't put up any resistance. They were too busy fighting the Ptolemies and they didn't have any troops to send my way. So you can actually have a pretty nice time against the Seleucids if you want to. Uh, and on top of that, Falks wielding troops, incredibly fun to use. So, <laughs> yes, 
I think I think uh, it's a good spot for them. Yeah. Right. I think that's everyone from around that region. Should we do Anatolia then next? Um, All right. So Pontus. We can start with Pontus. Pontus. I don't want to play as Pontus. No. <laughs> uh, no, but Pontus is honestly a pretty solid faction. Their early game is rough, mm. but their late game is great. Yeah. They've got a great um, roster. Mm -hmm, very flexible. Lots of options. They have scythed chariots. Yep. Um, I think overall they might be our second entry into a Gima or maybe just below Carthage. Ooh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to put them in a Gima just because their start is not. Their that start is hard. great. Mm -hmm. Um. But again, they do have a fantastic roster. Are um, they? Their roster is probably better than Bosporin, but the Bosporin start is easier than Pontus. Yeah. So I think I think um, that's probably quite a good place because obviously Carthage, like thirty four settlements. If you're experienced yeah. at the game, you're gonna have a good time. Yeah. Like you're gonna make a load of money. Whereas Pontus, you're gonna have to scrap for that money. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to scrap to build your armies up. So I think around there's probably probably quite quite good, really. I think um, that's I think it's a good spot. Pontus is a good faction. Yeah, great faction. Um so on to Probably we can do Armenia if you want next, Armenia. Sure. Armenia is also very good. Like, mm. they they start off near the Seleucids, but like you said earlier, the Seleucids are distracted. Yeah. Armenians have horse archers and cataphracts, as well as Solid. pretty good pretty good heavy infantry. Um, I want to say they start with three or four cities in the mountains, so they're very defendable and they yeah. have good units. They're also a very high up there faction, man. I think I, I kind of want to put them. I kind of don't want to put them above Bosporans just because I think the Bosporans are, are a bit cooler. But okay. <laughs> sure, that's kind of weighting the coolness a bit more than some of the other stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I just like the fact that the Bosporans have such a versatile roster, whereas the Armenians are just pure Eastern. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. That's kind of harsh because the Eastern rosters are very strong. Um. What do you I think? think, I think it's a toss-up between Bosporan and Armenia. It could go either way. So I'm happy yeah. for them to be ahead or behind. It's uh, it's we'll they're pretty equal. They're yeah. pretty close. We'll stick them there for now and, and see see what we want to do. Atropatine though next, which Atropatine is rough. Hmm. I mean, you got I a... might put them. Go ahead. I was going to say you got a good roster again though, but mm -hmm. you're stuck between the. Like rather like um, Armenia's pretty free. Got quite a lot mm -hmm. of space around them to expand. Although it doesn't look like it on the map, when you mm -hmm. actually get in there, like they do have good expansion options. They're they're protected by the Caucasus in the north, so you don't really need like it's a big bottleneck around the Caucasus for the AI to come. So you don't need yep. to worry about that when you get there. Um, and like the Seleucids down in the south, whereas Atropatine's kind of I think you. Don't you start as a protectorate of the Seleucids as well? I don't think you start as a protectorate. I think you start as an ally, but you're basically an independent city surrounded by the Seleucids. Yeah. And I've seen the AI Atropatine basically walk past Seleucid cities to go attack rebels because that's really all they can do. Yeah. Their start is pretty, pretty rough. I let's, might put them at the bottom of a Phoebe's. Let's have a look. Um, let's actually have a look at the... Um... At their at their starting position, their units um, are good, but their start is pretty, yeah, pretty challenging. Oh, they have two cities. Okay, I thought they only had one. Yeah, so like you've pretty much you've got nowhere to expand. Like you're only surrounded, and like if so you're gonna go against Armenia, look at these settlements. Like it's gonna take you yeah. ages to get in there, like mm -hmm. get it all through these mountains and try mm -hmm. and fight them back. I mean, you could go north, but look how far away that That's is. That's, That's where the AI B lines it too. For yeah. AI Atropatine just goes there. <laughs> it's so but... far away as well. Like you're not going to be able to re like retrain your troops quickly or anything if you need to. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you're kind of screwed, aren't you? Really? Like it, it's good roster, but like we say, hard start. That's bad start. So, yeah, I uh, think I want to say low with Phoebe's. Better than the better than the Midians. But yeah, probably they have a just better. better roster. Than, yeah, probably. Oh yeah, maybe maybe better than Tylus and Suebi, I'd say. All right, but the the roster is 
pretty good, but yeah, at just least the rest of the maybe have places they can go. Ah, that's true. Yeah, we'll put them put them just above the Numidians because the Numidians also are in the same situation but have a much worse roster. So <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, anyone else from Anatolia? I actually oh uh, Galatians, Galatians, yeah. and Pergamon as well. That's Diadochi, um, though, isn't it? Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, um, um, Siloy Galatians, for Galatians, surely. I like Galatians, but they're pretty rough. Uh, so, Siloy. I like the Galatians. It breaks my heart, but you guys aren't that good. <laughs> I think they've got to be top of uh, top of Silo because they're a Celtic nation like the Chatty. All right. Um, and they also start with a few settlements. They don't just start with, like... Oh, does no, it, I believe it just they have two? three or four. Yeah, three or four, maybe. It. Um, and yeah, the, the the Galatians is a hard campaign, but it's yeah. personally one of my favorites because it's fun to fight all the like successor Freaks. and and Eastern style units with Celts. Like it's just a fun campaign, but it's very difficult and it's not very new player friendly. Fuck so. it, then it's going up here. All right, I think <laughs> sure. I think the interest, like I, I was gonna say say this, like I think it is really an interesting campaign. The one, like, it's not one for a new player again. <laughs> it's 100% not for a new player because if you don't know how to manage your cultural disorder, you're going to be screwed because it's a Celtic nation in the middle of Greece uh, and Anatolia, like, it, sorry, in the middle of Greek and Anatolian cities. So there's no cities around you that are going to help your culture convert to Celtic. So no. you're going to be completely an outsider an alien in that world for the whole time you play the campaign pretty much so yep. you're going to have massive cultural unrest and if you don't know how to manage that going to be a problem so i think yeah but it is really interesting that that ability to play the celts and fight the seleucids the ptolemies uh the pontus i think is cool so and yeah. i think it's they've got a cool history as well so yeah i think i think them being there is probably Probably all right, to be honest. As We're getting into the big boys. As hard as it is, yeah. Um, right, should we do nomads then? Let's do the nomads before we get into the real big boys. The real ones yeah, the that one... everyone's been waiting for. <laughs> well, you know, we have Insubres who've just been sitting there. Oh, and... shit, yeah. Insubres are pretty hard. I was going to do them uh, as part of Italy, but, you know. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, there's only one other faction in Italy. <laughs> Oh wow! As, I think as an Italian <laughs> faction, Italian right. factions. We yeah. <laughs> um, let's let's knock out the Insubres just so that we can yeah have only Eastern and successors left, basically, yeah. and Rome. Um, um Insubres, pretty 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 difficult, right? Bordering Rome, yeah, <laughs> Bord right next to Rome. Probably maybe about the same level as Numidia. Yeah. Um cuz they kind of have the same situation where you can this you know, Numidia, have, yeah. Yeah. They have more expansion options than Numidia cuz there are quite a few cities in that neighborhood. Yeah. Um like Batavium and stuff. Yeah. But you're fighting Rome and Rome <laughs> is going to be harder to beat yeah. than Numidia. As or much Carthage, as, I mean. Yeah, as much as you're a Celt and you have good Celtic units available to you, you need to get your stinky sewage-ridden Celtic town up to a up to a minor city or large city before you can get an actual good yeah. <laughs> good heavy infantry unit so uh basically i'm sorry sorry all your celt stands out there i'm sure you're gonna be commenting oh no they actually had you know sewage pits and stuff but sorry i don't i don't care i don't care <laughs> i said what i said okay um those those cities are not as good as greek or roman cities i'm sorry or eastern cities no, but like as much like as much as i i like the celtic sort of renaissance with like saying that you know uh, originally the idea that the celts were just horrible barbarians and stuff no i do think the celts had a lot of civilization especially with metal working and stuff and the reason mm -hmm. why we don't have it today is because they they didn't write stuff down and that's the yes. only reason but like at the same time in places where it's easier to quarry stone you're going to have stone cities. You're going to have greater buildings. You're going to have a greater ability to build stuff. And you can't say that living in mud huts and palisade walled huts is the same as living in an apartment block in Rome that what probably was made out of wood uh, or like a Roman palace or <laughs> or a Greek or the Pantheon or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's just not comparable. But 
I do I do think the Celts had a lot of lot more culture than than like is in popular culture anyway at least. For sure. Absolutely. Um, I don't know why we got I got onto that because I said that their cities were stinky and sewage ridden. So I guess I was trying to <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to beat my own point <laughs> and take the piss out of myself. So okay. Right. <laughs> on to let's just ignore that and go let's, on to let's the get, let's get Nomads. Nomads. Parthia. Parthia Parthia. Parthia's Parthia. good, man. Uh, yeah, that, I still, I think, for me personally, I find the start hard. And, like, for most of these nations, I actually don't find them, like, even some of the ones that a lot of people find really difficult, I don't. Mm -hmm. But Parthia, just because of how spread out it is at yeah. the start, but at the same time, like, you can't ignore that their general's bodyguard is probably one of the strongest in the game. Most likely. Will shred everything. The horse archers are very strong. You get cataphracts and cataphract horse archers early in the game without reforms. What more mm. do you need? <laughs> like, what more do you need? You're, look, you're just going to shred people, aren't you? So, I believe they also can hoard. Yeah, and they can. if they hoard, they spawn pretty good units when they hoard. Yeah, I've, I've actually tried that out and uh, gone to uh, Seleucia. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, they have... They have some pretty nice units <laughs> like there's, there's i want to i want to rank parthia high yeah like same to be honest because i think let's be honest they're the best of the nomads yeah sorry Scythians. i think maybe even maybe even a gima Ooh. maybe that's too high i don't know but i want to rate them pretty high i do love parthia so i'm gonna go for it i as in i love the history of the nation i love the uh uh, you know what they did in history, especially pouring gold down Crassus's yeah. throat. That yeah. that's kind of cool. Even though it probably didn't happen, I don't care. I want to believe that that. Well, yeah. I mean, it's horrible that someone got murdered, like killed in that way. But at the same time, it was him, and yeah. it's his own fault. <laughs> I want to believe that it did happen, even though he probably was just slain in the battle. But I mean, I want to believe that they did that. To him. <laughs> also, they eventually formed the Sassanid Empire, don't Ex they? Exactly. Which is yeah. A very influential thing in that sphere of the world. Yeah. Uh, Zoro and they rivaled Rome. Zoroastrians, um, bro, absolutely like love a bit of fire. So. Yeah, I think yeah. Parthia deserves a high, high spot. Yeah, and they they're cool as fuck. Who doesn't like the Parthians, man? They are so yeah. cool. Everyone likes them. They've got to be high. Um, Sarka. Or Saba. Saka or Saba. I can't remember what it's called in this. Saka, there we are. Yeah. Uh, Saka, oh, no. I think they're the worst nomad. Yeah. And if you look at where they start on the map, they're like way off in the top right corner, far away from everyone yeah. else. The closest thing they have is Bactria. Um, yep. And I mean, again, nomad cavalry going to be very strong, but they are but literally like... They also have a different buildings to this par Parthia, don't they? Like they have the yeah, the wooden style they, buildings. So yeah, uh, the, mo the like whereas Parthia actually can build stone walls and stuff like that. Um, I think the Sarka still can, but like yeah, they they they've got a different building roster, which is probably a little bit more limited than Parthia. Um, uh, I think you're right about that. I'm not 100. Yeah. percent So I, I think we can put the. I think Epibarta is about right. Um, okay. Probably, yeah, I'd say towards the top of there. Probably not, probably uh, around here somewhere. Above All right. A lot, what, why, what, what were you going to, where were you going to put them? I mean, they're good, but they're not exciting. Mm, yeah, is, that's is kind true. of my, my take on them. They're be they've got to be better than Alabroges, though, surely. Oh. Early, yeah, no, they they they're definitely better than a lot of factions on that list. Yeah, better than um, the Iberians, I'll say. But well, we can probably leave these Celts here because they've got quite an exciting, like they've got a great roster and they've got an exciting campaign because you start fighting another nation pretty much, mm -hmm. apart from Scordisky, which are just strong. So uh, yeah. those other two Celtic nations there, though, um, the Aedui and the Alverni, mm -hmm. like they have an exciting campaign right from the start. And they're strong. Whereas the Sarka, like, you're really strong, but don't have the enemies to make it exciting to start with, yeah. if that makes sense. Yes. So I think probably better than the Iberians, because they've got a better roster, and, and yeah. Yeah, do you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's good. around there somewhere. And then Sarakis, so yes, Scythia. Scythians. I think these guys are comparable to Armenia and Bosporan. Yeah. Um... 
Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, Paul Sartre bias Arme- is coming out here, guys. <laughs> I think Armenia is better than Sarasi's because they have a better start. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're they're they have horse archers, they have cataphracts, like they're good. I mean, like, <laughs> who like horse archers and cataphracts are like so OP, and they were OP in real life, so no one can complain about them being OP in the game because in real life yeah. they were OP, and. It's just, you can't get over that. Like, any nation that has horse archers is just automatically going to have a stronger roster. Because if you just build an army of pure horse archers, you're going to shred everything. Like, it's 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 it's, it's just going to happen. Like, so yep. I, you can't really rate any of these horse archer factions low. I'm just looking down there now, trying to see, like, have I put, have we put any of these horse archer factions low? But I don't, oh, uh, Atropatine, to be fair. Yeah, but... but yeah. Their, their starting position is pretty tough. It's pretty limiting. So, whereas the Sarakis, plenty of room to expand into. You can fight the Bosporans early on if you want a really interesting campaign. Um, and then, you know, you've got all that all that step to go around into if you want to expand that way. And then or when you, you want to... Or you could invade Pontus or, yeah, or Armenia Pontus, or something. Greece, Armenia, sail the seven seas and mm. do what you want. So, yeah, I think, I think that's a good rating there. And there's no Hetai Royal Stratahos yet. Not so, yet. The best for last. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So some have got to come, come, come forward first. And let's start with Kyrene, the best nation on the game. So yeah, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll leave that there for now. Uh, no, Kyrene has actually a really good roster. I'm going to say yes. that. That's the that's the first and only positive thing I'm going to say about Kyrene. Kyrene is next to the Ptolemies, and if you want to go the other way, Carthage. They have literal s- tracks of useless desert around them that that have <laughs> pointless settlements that like not pointless settlements but settlements that that will take you like t- a turn to get to you'll take it and it'll be making 200 a turn or something yeah, with Olivia. four old men sat in the yeah. desert selling camels like that is literally there's literally nothing there for the <laughs> for Kyrene to like take advantage of Unless you go to Crete, you can make the campaign quite interesting. But unfortunately, Kyrene is a is a um, a victim of its own starting position, uh, which right. is pretty hard. Honestly, I've got to say, Kyrene's pretty hard nation. As Kyrene, though, you can, with a little bit of skill and a, with a little bit of good management, you can take the troops you have, invade Egypt, yeah, and you know take back your uh, rightful throne. It's it's doable, pretty hard, pretty fun if you take that route um, from my own experience. Um, but they are uh, they're they're starting to like the the fact that they are like out in the, in the middle of the desert is good and bad because it means yeah. like you have plenty of time to defend like it's easy to defend yourself but it's hard to expand. But once you get into Egypt, if you can t- capture Egypt, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Like, I've got to say, if you don't fight Egypt, they're probably here. Yeah. If you, if you do you fight, fight Egypt, they're probably like up here, around here somewhere. Yeah. I think so. Um, I think I they're don't... pretty comparable to the Achaean League, but they have a better start than the Achaean League. Yeah, that's true. Because they've got similar-ish rosters. The Achaean League's roster is probably a bit more expansive. But mm-hmm. yeah, Kyrene does have a quite a good start uh, compared. Even though I would say the start is difficult. If you mm-hmm. like Mosca says, if you if you know what you're doing and you want to invade Egypt, you can probably take Egypt on quite quite well. Um, like how how well did your campaign go? Like when you got into Egypt, how much resistance did they put up? Uh, I had to fight a couple enemy full stacks with basically just armies full of siloi, <laughs> but it, it 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 can work if you're if you have, if you have good micro and you uh you know kind of how to play the ai it can work but it's pretty hard you really do like missile infantry don't you (laughs) and they're cheap (laughs) yeah that's why they're they're cheap oh god i can't imagine i got that that for me that a battle like that for me would just be honestly just pain (laughs) it's a lot of running away i'd be crying into the microphone (laughs) it works it it can work though it can definitely work no i i could see how it works i how it works but like did you get like repetitive strain injury after that from the amount of micro or something like Hey man, I'm a gamer. <laughs> I'm a gamer. A gamer and, and a baller. <laughs> yeah. Oh fucking hell. 
Um, <laughs> right. Um, let's do Pergamon then next before we get into some of the, the big boys. Um, sure. Pergamon, good city, really good city to start with. You you have the, you have the um the the wonder right. Um, the per the wonder is the mausoleum at Halicarnassus. Ah, uh, so just south, yeah. And I believe Egypt starts with that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, they do. I think Pergamon just starts as one city, doesn't doesn't yeah. it? Yes, I think Pergamon is just better than Pontus. Because they have a better... I think their early game is a little bit better because their units aren't as weak as Pontus's early Ooh, game. I, see, this is... See, I... This is this is going to be a disagreement here because I would okay. put Pergamon like... I would put Pergamon like just below Kyrene. Kyrene. Um, mm. The reason hmm. being... So, like, I'll, I'll okay. say my arguments... Like... You're, you have the Seleucids and the, uh, the and the Ptolemies around you, and like we said, that's not always bad. Like wh like for example, playing it's by free Athenia. real estate. Yeah, it is free real estate, especially because it's so far away from their homeland. They don't really know what to do and like mm -hmm. defend it well. Um, so yeah, I guess that's good. But then at the same time, you can they can be competent sometimes and send a full stack your way every yeah. now and then. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I kind of I agree that they're good. I probably okay, maybe not so low. I probably I probably put them at the top of Ep Epibartai here. All right, what I can live with that. Okay, okay. Next, next disagreement you get to you get to decide. Then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, right, let's do Epirus. All right. What would you say for Epirus? Ah, uh, I think Epirus is above Aetolia and below Syracuse. Although maybe they are better than Syracuse because they have pikemen and decent cavalry. See, um, I, I, see, yeah, this is this is where you get to decide. But I, I'll just say what I where I would put them. I would put them in Agama. Agama, wow. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Just because they're cool as fuck, bro. <laughs> they, have a, they have a cool history. <laughs> yeah. They, I, I, I'm, I'm a big. Ep out of all the factions in Rome or RIS, Galatia and Epirus are probably my favorites overall. Yeah. Because of like their campaign gameplay and units. Um, I'm trying to not be. I'm trying to not be biased and be fair though. <laughs> I definitely wasn't biased then. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna say. No, let's I... stick them. Let's stick them uh, behind Carthage and Epilectoi. Oh yeah, no. You, well, you were saying down here, so I'm 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 happy to put them down here because literally my only reason is like mm -hmm. for putting them up high is because they're cool. Like that, that yeah. is it. There's no other reason. They do have a good roster. They've actually got a pretty decent starting position, but it's mm -hmm. pretty decent until Rome comes knocking and then yeah. it suddenly becomes oh shit, I'm going to die. So it can get yeah, it can go from good to bad pretty quick with Epirus. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to put them where you originally said if you if you agree with that. So what what was it between Bithynia and I Aetolians? I think I I want to probably maybe above. I, just, I, I said above <laughs> Syracuse, but putting Pergamon oh, ahead yeah. of of Epirus yeah. and Syracuse doesn't feel right. Let's let's bump Pergamon down to be next to Bithynia, maybe. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I think they're better than the. Although they only start with one city, so I guess I totally yeah. makes sense being there. Cool. Well, and just to re reiterate, guys, like, okay. like everything above Siloy is like good. Like we we like yeah. to play all of the all of these. Like, and even some of these Siloy, obviously, we like to play as well. But they just have bad situations that they start with. Like Massalia is quite fun to play. It's a really good challenge. It's just, it's really, really hard. So, so like, that's why it's in Silo. Um, but, yeah, um, right. Which big hitter do you want to go with first, then? Let's leave Rome to last. Let's All go right. Bactria, then, because they're the next smallest, I guess, the smallest nation. Bactria um, is elite. Yeah, I, I've got to say, I agree. I, I think Hetairoi. Hetairoi? I think they're our yeah. first Hetairoi. Our first Hetairoi. They're, they have a very good roster, a very good start. They're diverse few, roster as well yeah they're actually one of the few factions in 0 0.5 that start with a positive income i believe yeah most factions start with negative money mines um, all around 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, lots of lands. The Seleucids. You have to fight the Seleucids and the Saka. Parthia but as both well. Parthia as well, but that's all manageable. Mm. Um, they have a really interesting history. They're the crossroads between the East and the West um, at this time period, basically. Uh, they're just really cool. Like... They're de they they are definitely worthy to be the first Hetai Roy. Yeah, they are like they they're really like exactly what you said. They're really cool. Great roster, great position. You're nestled in the mountains as well, so there's only one way that they can come at you. Um, loads of mines around, so you can get stinking rich if you want to. Um, hard, you know, you can have some hard fights, but Seleucia in the east, like if it's the AI really doesn't have much because like they'll have they'll they might have one full stack or two full stacks to throw at you every now and then but like because they're so spread out you can actually conquer the seleucids pretty quickly in the east and then once you've conquered them in, in the east there's nothing stopping you going to seleucia and getting the getting the real cash um, oh, yeah. and like i say really cool nation history probably when i look at this board like probably my like one of my most interesting histories out of all these nations on there, um, excluding probably like the the rest of the Diadochi down there, um, I, I don't know. Actually, I'd probably say for me they're more interesting than the Antigonids, but like really one of the most interesting histories out of all of them. And and in fact, like the the Bactrians stuck around for a long time. There was Greek settlements there for a long, long time. They they lasted for ages. Um, so yeah, cool. Right, let's. Should we do the Antigonids next then? Sure. And uh, what? Where it all started. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, I think they're better than Carthage. Ooh, so you're going that low, are you? That low. I think they're better than Carthage. They're probably. <laughs> think about. I, I know that some people struggle with Macedon when they're playing it, but yeah. it's really. You just have to know how to play the game in the mod. Yeah. Once, if you know the tricks and you know how the game works, they're very easy. Like, their their starting position is different because they start off with mainly mercenary units instead of actual like faction units. Yeah. And that's a historical thing. I won't go into detail, but basically at this time point, uh, he his whole army Antigona Antigona's whole army was basically mercenaries. Um, yeah. Uh, you actually. You actually do start weaker than the amount of settlements would suggest. Mm -hmm. Like yes. you have a you have quite a lot of settlements, but at the same time, you really don't start with an army. Like like you say, they're all mercenary troops, so you can't retrain them. And you're kind of spread out. Like if Epirus decides to attack you, you've got no response. If mm -hmm. the northern Thracians decide to come down and attack you, you've that's kind of what you have to focus on. So then you leave yourself open to the Boeotians, the Aetolians in the south. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it is more difficult than, than what you would expect from a large nation. Uh, but at the same time, if you know what you're doing with campaign management, you can rake in the cash and absolutely demolish everyone. So <laughs> it's, yeah, kind of, it's my, kind of one of them. My go-to for Mastodon or Antigonid is to just try and get rid of Epirus right away. And yeah. then once you've done that, you, you're in a pretty good position to consolidate everything, and you can have, like, your army into the north fighting Epirus, and then put together an army in the south and go after Athens or Boeotia or whoever you want. Yeah. Um, On top of that, I, we've, we've got to say that they, they probably have the most significant history out of all the Greeks. Um, yeah, they're, they're the big daddies, man. Like, yeah. it all started there. So... I, I, would, I would say bottom of Agama right now. Bottom of Agama? Are, uh... I feel like they should be better than the Bowie or um, Belga, Belga, yeah. Belga. I then, think they should be better. Well, I think Parthia should be better than them as well, to be fair. So we can All right. Bump, as in better than the Belga. Yeah. Although they do have a very easy start, whereas Parthia have a bit more difficult start. But ah, Parthia is too cool. Also, two uh, two sons. I like that. Two sons. Two yeah, sons Tatooine. together. Yeah, I, I think the reason why I probably wouldn't put them in Hetairoi is just because if if you don't know what you're doing. It is actually more difficult than what you think. Also, mm. not quite as cool as Bactria. I've got to say, just yeah. not quite as cool <laughs> for us, anyway. Some of you people out there absolutely love Macedon. I know, I know many of you love Macedon, but yeah, 
for us, yeah, probably top of Agama, which is still a very good score when you look at some very of the fan fantastic nations that are down here. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some yeah. really good nations that are down here. So, doing very well. Right. And I just want to comment that I like the fact that we have a lot of stuff in the middle, yeah. a little bit of stuff in the bottom, and a small amount of stuff at the top. That's, I think that's, that's fair. Yeah, and like, <laughs> I hope Ahal doesn't really get upset with us for putting a load of Greeks down here, but I think it's ma they're mainly they're mainly uh, they're mainly there because they're difficult. That's like mainly yeah. the reason why they're there. It's not because they're not cool and they're not interesting. Like, some of these nations down here are actually more interesting than some of the ones up here. Like, mm -hmm. I would argue that, that Carthage isn't that interesting to play at the start compared to, say, Rhodes or uh, Boeotia or Sparta. But, like, yeah, it's just they're really difficult. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, on to... Let's do, let's do the Ptolemies next, then. Um, All right. I personally think it, it has to be Hetairoi, if not Stratahos, but I know we're saving Stratahos for, for one. Yeah. If there was going to be a second one in Stratos, I think it would be the Ptolemies. I personally really? think the Ptolemies is the strongest start in the game. Um apart from I, I... Go ahead. Um I'm I'm maybe even stronger than Rome, to be honest. Uh the owning Egypt is a gold mine. <laughs> yeah. I had thyroid. There's, there's not much can be said. Like they have a very good roster. Yeah, really and good. And a good, roster. good starting economy. And um, really interesting, really interesting, like, history and gameplay yes. with the... Because, to be honest, as Ptolemies, you're not going to be expanding into the rebel settlements around you because they're pretty pretty useless. So, mm -hmm. like, as in, compared to the settlements of the of the player. So, you're pretty much going to be at war with the Ptolemies, uh, with the Seleucids straight away, which makes and for... And you have to deal with. Yeah, really interesting, really interesting gameplay. You're also going to be, yeah, dealing with Kyrene, and also you've got a load of land in Anatolia that yep. uh, is all Greek, so that's great for you, but at the same time, there's a load of enemies there that can come knocking on the door. So I think it's a very interesting campaign, and also, unlike, unlike the Seleucids, where your start is difficult because of the cultural unrest, the Ptolemies don't really have that. You have a bit of cultural unrest, around Egypt and around Judea, but predominantly you're all right because they're close to your capital, whereas Seleucids have like... where And then the faraway regions are all Greek, so it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Whereas right. Seleucids, the faraway regions, are all the wrong culture and you oh, get yeah. screwed. <laughs> yeah, Seleucid is a hard one, but you can do it. Yeah. Egypt is definitely easier early on than yeah. Seleucid. So, are we, uh, are we uh, you know... Well, let's get it over with. Let's put a uh, let's put Roman Stratagos. <laughs> Stop fooling around. <laughs> oh, where's Seleucid's gone now? Get Seleucid's out of there. Uh, so Rome, yeah, we all know Rome's roster Rome's very very best. strong. Rome is best. Rome's coolest Ro history, and they're the coolest. So what are you going to say? <laughs> Rome has basically some of the best units in the game, the best starting position in the game. Um. They're not like Egypt or Seleucid, where they have a whole lot of land and it's spread out, or even Carthage. Yeah. All their land is pretty much in one place. Same you can send one as well. You can send one army north to fight the Gauls, and one army south to fight Syracuse and Carthage. And from there, you can go wherever the heck you want. Um, and historically speaking, well, the Roman Empire was a lot more important than the Seleucid Empire or the Egyptian Empire. Like... Yeah. Oh, well, not the Egyptian, the Ptolemaic Empire. The yeah. Roman Empire was a lot more important than the Ptolemaic Empire or the Seleucid Empire. Um, um, more important than Bactria, I don't know, but Rome is Rome is Rome. Like, yeah. they're at the top. Were they more important than the Antigonids? Yeah. Um, probably. I think, that, honestly, the closest, closest uh, to modern-day influence to the Romans is Athens, honestly, right now. And they're yeah. a long way apart. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and put Seleucid in, in Hetairoi as well, where they deserve yeah, to be. Yeah. I, I mean, I personally would put them at the top, but I, I acknowledge most people wouldn't. I'll I put think, them in I think, between. I think Ptolemy is technically an, is an easier campaign than Seleucid, just because they're they're not they're they're big and unwieldy like the Seleucid, but they're not as unwieldy. Yeah, I, and they're they're more accessible to play. 
like, like I say, I think the Ptolemies have genuinely, apart from Rome, the strongest start. So, mm -hmm. whereas I don't, I think the Seleucids, it, they look strong. They're like a paper tiger at the start, the Seleucids. Like, they look really strong because you start with like 90 odd settlements. Oh, yeah. But you are so unstable, losing loads of money. So, unless you know what you're doing campaign management wise, Seleucids are a paper tiger. So you've got to be really, really on it with the campaign management and min-max everything. Literally everything. Down to the smallest garrisons in your cities. Down to what cultures you're trying to promote in various areas. So for me, that makes them more interesting than the Ptolemies. But I, I, I acknowledge that it's a lot harder. So I think below the Ptolemies is fair. I, I think better than Bactria, to be honest. But um, you'll, you'll probably never lose a campaign playing as the Seleucid either. And... That's yep, part that's of true. what gets them such a high spot, and they have a great roster. Depends and... what you uh, depends what you count as losing, though, because a lot of people probably will quit after being um, like a hundred thousand in debt and losing like ten <laughs> cities or something. So, but but you got you got the income positive in in turn one, man. Like yeah, well most people won't is... do won't do that to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> they're but they're a big boy. They, they're yeah. Tyroi is right where they need to be. Yeah, they, I, I agree. I think, and, and I think they're a really interesting campaign because of the amount of different. Like uh, the Ptolemies, you, you you tend to fight predominantly Greeks, apart from in Anatolia, so you are fighting similar enemies. Whereas at least like the Seleucids, you're fighting like Parthians. Uh, you're fighting all the Anatolians, obviously, same as the Ptolemies. To be fair with that, and Greeks as well, and Ptolemies. So. I feel like you get a bit more variation there, but obviously I'm biased. I'm very biased. They're my favorite nation, if anyone didn't know. <laughs> yep. um, should we actually, like, should, we'll say where we would actually put Crappadocia, because obviously they don't deserve to be, like, if we were doing this without kayfabe, <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't be there. But I'd probably put them, like, middle of a Phoebe's, probably. Um, they they have horse archers. Okay, okay. Bottom of uh, Epibarti then probably. Like they have great horse archers, but yeah, they they're kind of stuck though in the middle, really, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're they're yeah they're and they I think they also have a different culture. I think they are Anatolian culture, so there are quite a few Anatolian culture cities yeah. near them, but there's also a lot of Greek cities. I don't know, I. I like to call Cappadocia Crappadocia. Yeah. They annoy me. <laughs> um, but they're really not a bad faction. But no, they're, they're, they're quite good. <laughs> they are yeah, quite good, good, but we are just taking the piss. But we will leave them there for now anyway. <laughs> yeah, but they're actually pretty good. They're actually pretty good. Yeah. Ah, well, thank you guys for watching. So if you have made it to this point... If you want to do one of these, the link will be down in the description below. And we encourage you to put your ratings on the RAS Discord in the RAS screenshot um, channel. And we might actually yes. do another video where we're going to rate your ratings. <laughs> if yeah, that makes sense. That could be a lot of fun. Yeah. But yeah, anyone who watches this video, please make your own tier list. Please share it with us. We want to see where the community stands and we want to know who really is the Stratagos of RIS and who is the Crapadocha. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I can feel a lot of Spartans and Athenians going up into Hetairoi uh, oh, in yeah. the future. I'm a psychic, basically, you know. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, do send those in um, and uh, we will rate them in the future, which should be good fun. And obviously, comment down below what you think of our ratings, even if yeah. you think we are two Muppets that don't know anything about RAS. Obviously, that's not yeah. true, but you might think it anyway. Uh, you and know, make humans sure do you have like delusions. And, and yeah. share the video with all your friends. Like the video. You have to like the video and make sure you share it as well. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, comment your favorite faction too. Yeah, that would be a good idea so we can see where we uh, went right or we went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. As always, thanks to Mosca for being here. It's been a pleasure to actually speak to him for the first time. Um, well, so, thanks for having me here. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was really good fun. And I will see you all again on the next video.